In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. In the Gospel lesson that we just heard this morning, we're given a reminder of what our number one priority in life as Christians is to be. And we were given a vivid description of how to navigate our lives as Christians in this world. Jesus had just entered a small village. He was on his way to Jerusalem. And as he entered into that village, he saw ten men standing afar off at a distance. Men who were suffering from the disease of leprosy and who were yelling at Jesus, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. Now, leprosy at the time was a skin disease that represented uncleanliness to the society. Lepers were considered unclean. It was a disease that brought great physical pain and great physical suffering. And those people who contracted the disease had to live in isolation from the rest of society. Nobody wanted to be close to them because then they too would be unclean. So they were standing at a distance, the Gospel says, and yelling out to Jesus to have mercy on him. Most likely they had heard that Jesus had already healed somebody else of leprosy, and that he had been, he had gained that reputation of a miraculous healer. So they were calling out to him. And when Jesus heard them, he yelled back at them and told them that they should go and show themselves to the priests. And so these men obediently did as Jesus commanded them, believing that if they went to the priest, they would be healed. And because of their obedience, this gospel story says that they were immediately healed when they turned away to go to the priest, even before they got to the priest. And then the gospel says that one of these men, when he noticed that he was completely healed and that he wasn't suffering anymore or that he was in pain, he came back to Jesus, this one man. And in a total act of complete humility and an act of thanksgiving, it says that this man fell down flat on his face at the feet of Jesus and with a loud voice so that everybody could hear around him, he glorified God and he, give, he gave thanks to Jesus for what Jesus had done for him. And in that single act, this man in the Gospel reveals for us what our role as Christians is to be in this world. And that's what I want to talk about today. As Christians, we are called out to be people who come together for a very specific purpose. In fact, that's the true meaning of the word church. It comes from the Greek word ekklesia, and ekklesia is translated from Greek to be called out for a specific purpose. That's what it means to come to church. And for us, this specific purpose is that we are called out to come together as a community of people who first and foremost worship our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and that we are called to give thanks to Him always for all that He has done for us and all that He has given to us. We are called out to be people who worship and people who give thanks. Somebody once described going to church to me in this way. He said that for him, going to church is like going to somebody's birthday party. Because when you go to the birthday party of a friend, and a lot of us remember doing that when we were young, and I do it every Wednesday. 
with our mother and toddlers because we have a birthday to celebrate every Wednesday. When you go to a birthday party of a friend, we go knowing that the event is meant to be all about that person. It's his or it's her day when they're celebrating their birthday. It's not our day. And we go there knowing that. All the attention on that day is meant to be directed towards the one person who is being celebrated, the person whose birthday it is. And I've always liked that description of the church that my friend shared with me, because it's a great way of thinking about the church in general. We come to church really for two specific reasons. One, we come to church to worship God. And number two, we come to church to give thanks to Him and to commune with Him. Very important. We don't come to church for God to worship us. And we don't come to church for God to give thanks to us for being here. It's His day. It's not our day. Coming to church on Sunday is all about God. And it's not about us really at all. And I think that's what the man in the gospel recognized. And it's for that reason that he decided to go back and to give praise to the one who healed him. That man understood that he was truly in the presence of God and that he needed to show thanks for that. Just one of them went back. And when you're in the presence of God, you go into worship mode. <laughs> and you go into thanksgiving mode. And this man did it by literally falling flat on his face at the feet of Jesus and openly praising God for what he did. When we're in the presence of God, we worship and we give thanks. This is the lesson that we're reminded of this morning when we hear this gospel. And this is why we are all gathered here this morning. When we come to church, to this blessed basilica, and when we are gathered together, called out for a specific purpose, we are here in the presence of God. And we should never forget that. The Holy Eucharist, Eucharistia in Greek, is the holy mystery that we participate in and that we will participate in in just a few minutes from now, where we will receive the very body and blood of our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ and where we will commune with Him. And this Greek word, Eucharistia, is literally translated thanksgiving or giving thanks. The Eucharist is giving thanks. And as Christians, it's the Eucharist which is what should stand at the very center of each and every single one of our lives. Because it's the Eucharist that sustains us from week to week. And it's the Eucharist that strengthens us from week to week. And it's the Eucharist that literally is what gives us life when we come to communion together. So we come together each week here at church to worship. And we come together each week to give thanks to God for offering Himself to us. That's why we're here. We don't come to be worshipped or to be thanked for being here. And it's for this reason that the church calls Sunday the Lord's Day. And it's for this reason that we need to be together every single week as a community to encourage one another, to pray for one another, and to persuade each other to not lose our faith living in this crazy and upside-down world. But we need to come together to do as St. Paul commands in his epistles, to never give up, but to be encouraged to continue in our struggle to fight the good fight. 
And so, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, as Christians, it's our responsibility and it's our faithful duty to enter diligently into the joy of everything that this day, this holy day, this Eucharistic day, this eighth day has to offer to us. The joy of being in the presence of our Lord, God, and Savior, Jesus Christ, and communing with Him. That's the message of the Gospel today, because it reminds us of why we are truly here. When we think of that one leper who returned to give thanks, it reminds us of who we really are. It reminds us of what we're called to do. It reminds us that we are people who are called out to worship our God and that we are called out as a community of people to give thanks for all that God offers to us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.